So in this video, we're going to talk very much about the right arm, and we're going to use Hogan as our reference, because Hogan was obviously a golfing great, and he used to talk very much about the trail arm in his fundamental books that he wrote, and I think it's really important because it's something that I introduce into my teaching on a day-to-day -day basis. So first of all, what are we trying to do with the trail arm? What, what, what's its role? And it's going to be doing two things. One of the things is that as our arm moves to the side of the body in the downswing, that will help us get our hands forward. Okay, so when we hit the golf ball, we want to make sure that the hands end up ahead of the club head. What we don't want is we don't want the club head overtaking the hands and adding loft like so. So that's the first thing. And the second thing that it's going to do is it's going to help you keep the golf club on plane. So what I mean by this is can you see the way that if I let my elbow lead my hands like so, the way that gets the club coming down and play. If the hands lead the elbow, then we're gonna have a real problem and we're gonna get really steep. Now, what's happened in lots of instruction nowadays is that we have more access to biomechanical information so we can isolate what a movement is doing. And a lot of people talk about the right arm straightening. This is true, okay, so your right arm is gonna straighten, but I still like using Hogan's reference of driving the elbow. And the reason why is because, like I say, most amateurs end up pulling down the club and not moving the upper arm to the side of the body enough. So the reluctancy that I tend to find with some people is they worry about, well, if I, Russ, if I just move this arm like this, I'm gonna get really narrow with my hands, like so. And what I tend to say to them is, don't worry about that. You don't need to worry about that for two reasons. One, because what will happen is your lower arm will naturally move away from your upper arm. Okay, this is gonna happen very naturally. So you can, you can exaggerate this feeling of this upper arm moving to the side of your body as much as you want. And the second thing is, if you, when you move like this, it's, it's not an isolated movement anyway. You should be turning, you see? As I turn my chest towards the target, that's gonna help me then get that feeling of moving more to the left so my upper arm can stay to the side of my body. So if you're somebody who's tried Hogan's driving elbow techniques and you don't like it, you feel stuck, the reason why you feel stuck is because you're not moving your chest. Now, as ever, this is my favored uh, training aid, the Swing Buddy. And this is something that will feature a lot moving forward into this year because I just think it's so simple. And this is a real simple drill that you could do with it or something alike. Now, I like the Swing Buddy because it's manufactured here in the UK. It's the length and the weight of a seven iron, which means that you can do some practice swings, striking the ground, like so. See so the way I'm getting that, just to catch the edge of the ground there. And what this exercise always does is it gives you that liberated feeling of as I come down, I'm trying to move this like this. I'm trying to drive my elbow in similar to what Hogan used to talk about, but because I'm also turning my chest, that moves my shoulder, which means I can extend that arm through that hit. And with students that I get the opportunity to work with, who end up doing that for a few repetitions, it gives them that liberated feel of exactly what it's like to swing through. So the point is, you can't necessarily just work on driving the elbow on its own. You have to move the chest with it, but the feeling of moving the chest towards the target whilst driving your elbow is gonna have a real natural and good positive effect on releasing the club correctly. I'll see you soon.